In this video, we're going to be doing four word problems involving systems of linear equations. Let's jump right in. Alright, so here we have our first problem. The cost of tickets for a movie is $3 for children and $5 for adults. If 300 movie tickets are sold and $1,260 is collected, how many tickets of each type were sold? So let's start off by assigning variables to the quantities we want to solve for. So let's say A is the number of adult tickets sold, and that C is the number of children's tickets sold. So here we have two variables, A and C, which means we're going to need two equations to determine their values. We're told that 300 movie tickets are sold in total. So we know that A plus C, that is, the number of adult tickets sold plus the number of children's tickets sold, is equal to 300. So that is our first equation. Now, we're also told that children's tickets cost $3, and that adult tickets cost $5, and that in total, $1,260 is collected. So let's translate this information into an equation. So if adult tickets cost $5 each, and A adult tickets are sold, that means 5A is the amount of money made from the adult tickets. So let's say, for example, two adult tickets are purchased then in total, the amount of money made from adult tickets is 5 times 2, or 10. And similarly, we're told that children's tickets cost $3 each, and that C children's tickets are sold in total. So 3C will be the amount of money made from children's tickets. And in total, the amount of money made from adult tickets plus the amount of money made from children's tickets is equal to 1,260. The problem tells us that. So now we have a system of two equations with two variables, so we should be able to solve for their values using either the substitution or elimination methods. I've made a video covering the substitution and elimination methods in detail, so if you want to check that out, I'll have it linked in the top right of the screen right now. For this system, let's use the substitution method. Specifically, let's solve for a in our first equation. So if we subtract c from both sides in our first equation, we get that a equals 300 minus c. And now, we can substitute 300 minus c for a in our second equation. So if we do that, we get 5 times a, which we just found out was 300 minus c, plus 3c, equals 1260. Now our equation is in terms of one variable, c, so we should be able to solve for it directly. Let's expand this term out. 5 times 300 is 1500 and 5 times negative c is minus 5c. Then we have plus 3c, and that's equal to 1260. If we simplify this further, we get 1500 minus 5c plus 3c, so minus 2c, equals 1260. Now let's subtract 1,260 from both sides and add 2c to both sides. If we do that, we get 1,500 minus 1,260 on the left side, and on the right side, we have 2c. 1,500 minus 1,260 is 240, and 240 is equal to 2c. Now, if we divide by 2 on both sides, we get 240 divided by 2, which is 120, is equal to 2c over 2, which is c. So c, which is the number of children's tickets sold, is equal to 120. Now that we've solved for c, we can plug this value back into our original equation to solve for a. We know that a plus c, which we just found was 120, is equal to 300. If we subtract 120 from both sides, we get that a is equal to 300 minus 120, which is 180. So the number of adult tickets sold is 180. So our final answer is that the number of adult tickets sold, which we called a, is equal to 180. And the number of children's tickets sold, which we called c, is equal to 120. And that's really all there is to this problem. Okay, so here we have our second problem. The cost of 5 tacos and 3 burritos is $19, and the cost of 4 tacos and 8 burritos is $32. How much will 4 tacos and 5 burritos cost? Okay, so let's start off this problem the same way we started off the last problem. Let's assign variables to the quantities we want to solve for. 
So let's say T is the cost of a taco and that B is the cost of a burrito. So once again, we have two variables, which means we're gonna need two equations to determine their values. And once we determine the values of T and B, so what the cost of a taco is and what the cost of a burrito is, we'll be able to find out how much four tacos and five burritos cost. So we're told that the cost of five tacos and three burritos is $19. Now let's translate that into an equation. So we purchase five tacos, each of which costs T dollars, and then we also purchase three burritos, each of which costs B dollars, and the total cost of that purchase is $19. 5T is the cost of five tacos, and 3B is the cost of three burritos. Now, similarly, we're told that the cost now we're also told that the cost of four tacos and eight burritos is $32. So if we translate that into an equation, we get that 4T, which is the cost of four tacos, plus 8 times B, which is the cost of eight burritos, is equal to 32. So here we have our system of linear equations with two variables, and let's use the elimination method to solve for one of them. So let's say we call this first equation, equation one, and this second equation, equation two, and let's say we try to eliminate the variable t. We have 5t in the first equation and 4t in the second equation. So if we multiply the first equation by four and the second equation by five, then we'll have 20t in both equations, so we can subtract equation two from equation one and eliminate t. So here's what that looks like. If we multiply the first equation by four, we get 5t times four, which is 20t, plus 3b times four, which is 12b, is equal to 19 times four, which is 76. And if we multiply the second equation by five, we get 4t times five, which is 20t, plus 8b times 5, which is 40b, is equal to 32 times 5, which is 160. And now, if we subtract equation 2 from equation 1, notice that we get 20t minus 20t, so the t terms cancel, and then we have 12b minus 40b is equal to 76 minus 160. 12b minus 40b is negative 28b, and that's equal to 76 minus 160, which is negative 84. Now, if we want to solve for b, we have to divide by negative 28 on both sides. If we do so, on the left side, we're left with b, and on the right side, we have negative 84 divided by negative 28, which is equal to 3. And so b, which is the cost of a burrito, is $3. And now we can plug this information back into one of our original equations, to solve for t, the cost of a taco. So let's say we use the first equation, we know that five times t plus three times b, which we just found out was three, is equal to 19. So we have five times t plus three times three, which is nine, is equal to 19. And if we subtract nine from both sides, we have five t is equal to 19 minus nine, which is 10. And then if we divide by t on both sides, we get that t is equal to two. So the cost of a taco is $2. And so our T, which is the cost of a taco, is $2. And B, which is the cost of a burrito, is $3. But this isn't our final answer. We're not looking for the cost of a taco and the cost of a burrito. We're looking for how much four tacos and five burritos will cost in total. We found out that each taco costs $2, so the cost of four tacos will be four times two, and we also found out that each burrito costs three dollars, so five burritos will cost five times three dollars. Four times two is eight, and five times three is fifteen. So four tacos and five burritos will cost twenty-three dollars. And that's all there is to this problem. All right, so here's our third problem. The sum of the ages of Tom and Mary is thirty-two. Four years ago, Tom was twice as old as Mary. How old are Tom and Mary now? So once again, let's start by assigning variables to the quantities we want to solve for. So let's say t is Tom's age now, and that m is Mary's age now. Once again, we have two variables, t and m, so we're going to need two equations to determine their values. We're told that the sum of the ages of Tom and Mary is 32. So we know that t plus m, that is Tom's age, plus Mary's age, is equal to 32. Now we're also told that four years ago, Tom was twice as old as Mary. How are we gonna translate this to an equation? 
Well, let's first consider how old was Tom four years ago? Well, if he's t years old now, then four years ago, he must have been t minus four years old. And let's do the same thing for Mary. If Mary is m years old now, then four years ago, she must have been m minus four years old. But keep in mind that four years ago, Tom's age, which was t minus four, was twice as much as Mary's age then, which was m minus four. And so our equation is t minus four is equal to two times in parentheses m minus four. So now we have two. Now we have a system of two equations, and we need to solve for the two variables. In this case, let's use the substitution method. So let's solve for t in our first equation by subtracting m from both sides. If we do so, we get that t is equal to 32 minus m. And now we can substitute 32 minus m for t in our second equation. So if we do that, we get t minus 4, so 32 minus m, which is t, minus 4 is equal to 2 times m minus 4. Now let's do a bit of simplification. We have 32 minus 4 on this side, which is 28, and then we still have the minus m is equal to 2 times m, and then 2 times minus 4, which is minus 8. Now let's bring the m terms to one side and the numbers to the other. So let's add 8 to both sides and also add m. So if we do that, on the left side, we get 28 plus 8, and on the right side, we get 2m plus m. 28 plus 8 is 36, and 2m plus m is 3m. And now if we divide by 3 on both sides, we get that 36 divided by 3, which is 12, is equal to m. And so this means that Mary is 12 years old right now. Now, to solve for Tom's age, we can plug this value back into any one of our original equations. Let's plug it back into the first one, because that's simpler. From our first equation, we know that t plus m, which we just found out was 12, is equal to 32. And if we subtract 12 from both sides, we get that t is equal to 32 minus 12, which is 20. And so our final answer is that Tom's age right now, which is t, is 20, and that Mary's age right now, which is m, is 12. And that's all there is to this problem. Here we have our fourth and final question. Tom has 67 coins that are worth a total of $4.75. All of Tom's coins are either nickels or quarters. How many of each coin does Tom have? Alright, once again, let's assign variables to the quantities we want to solve for. So let's say n is the number of nickels Tom has, and that q is the number of quarters he has. So once again, we have two variables, n and q, so let's write two equations so we can solve for their values. We're told that Tom has 67 coins in total, and that all of his coins are either nickels or quarters. So we know that n plus q, that is the number of nickels he has, plus the number of quarters he has, is equal to 67. And we're also told that his 67 coins are worth a total of $4.75. For those of you who don't know, nickels are worth 5 cents, and quarters are worth 25 cents. Given that information, we know that 5, which is the amount of cents a nickel is worth, times n, which is the amount of nickels Tom has, plus 25, which is the amount of cents a quarter is worth, times q, which is the amount of quarters Tom has, is equal to $4.75, where 5n is the amount of money Tom has in nickels, and 25q is the amount of money he has in quarters. But we have to be careful here. On the left side of our equation, we have our money in terms of cents. A nickel is worth 5 cents, and a quarter is worth 25 cents. And on the right-hand side, we've written the money in terms of dollars, $4.75. And we can't have that. We can't be using cents on one side and dollars on the other. And so an easy fix would be to convert this $4.75 into just cents. Keep in mind that $1 is 100 cents, so $4.75 is the same as 475 cents. All right, so here we have our system of two equations with two variables, and now let's once again use substitution to solve for one of the variables. So let's say we wanna solve for n in our first equation. We can do that by subtracting q from both sides, so n is equal to 67 minus q, and now we can substitute 67 minus q for n in our second equation. 
If we do that, we get 5 times n, which is 67 minus q, plus 25q, is equal to 475. Now, let's expand this term out. 5 times 67 is 335. 5 times minus q is minus 5q, and then we have plus 25q, and that's equal to 475. If we combine like terms on the left-hand side, we get 335 minus 5q plus 25q, so plus 20q, is equal to 475. Now let's subtract 335 from both sides, and we get that 20q is equal to 475 minus 335. 475 minus 335 is 140, so 20q is equal to 140, and if we divide by 20 on both sides, we get that q is equal to 140 divided by 20, which is 7. And so this means Tom has 7 quarters. Now, we can plug this value for q back into one of our original equations. Let's use this first one because it's simpler. We know that n plus q, which we just found was 7, is equal to 67. And so if we subtract 7 from both sides, we get that n, which is the number of nickels Tom has, is equal to 60. And so our final answer is that Tom has 60 nickels and 7 quarters. And that's really all there is to this problem. Now, before I end off the video, I have one last tip that you can use for these types of problems to verify that you have the right answer. And so what you do is plug in the values you got. So in this case, we would plug in 60 for n and 7 for q into your two original equations and make sure they both are satisfied. We know that n plus q, so 60 plus 7, equals 67. So this first equation is satisfied. And for our second equation, we have 5 times n, which is 5 times 60, plus 25 times q, so 25 times 7, that's equal to 300 plus 175, which is indeed equal to 475. So our answer satisfies the second equation as well, which means we've done the problem correctly. And so that's just a method you can use to verify that you have the right answer for these types of problems. All right, so that wraps it up for this video. If it did help you out, please be sure to leave a like. And if you want to be notified when I post the rest of the videos in this Algebra 2 course, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.